Exodus chapter 30. Read verse 25. The Bible says, And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compa- compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be an holy anointing oil. Again, the word of God says, And thou shalt make it an, ho- an oil of holy ointment, An ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for the spirit in which the songs were sung. Lord, we're thankful to be able to assemble ourselves in the congregation of the saints. God, we're glad to be accepted among the beloved. Lord, we're thankful that our sins have been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, to be numbered amongst thy people. Now, Lord, as we come to you tonight, we come to you as humbly as we know how, thanking you for your goodness, thanking you for daily loading us with benefits and blessings. Father, for being far better to us than we deserve. And Father, we are grateful to be again in the house of God. Now, Lord, uh, behind the smiles, behind the, the faces of these in attendance, there are many needs. Lord, some may be dire. Lord, some may be physical. Some may be financial. Lord, some may be spiritual. But Lord, you who knowest the hearts and tries the reins, Lord, you know the need of every individual here tonight. And so, Father, I pray you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that, Lord, you would speak. And, God, I pray that, Lord, you would help your people to rejoice in thee. I pray for revival to break out in our midst. Uh, I pray if there's anybody here tonight unsaved, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Father, I pray for that one that is struggling, you would help them. That one who is seeking, that they would find Now, Father, I pray you'd bless us to sit in heavenly places. Uh, I pray the Word of God would become real in our minds and our hearts. And I pray that Jesus would be exalted and elevated uh, and given the rightful place in our hearts. Uh, Now, Father, we love you. Help us to do as we've heard. Help us to turn our eyes upon you. Help us, Lord, to bless you for, Lord, what you've done in our lives. And then, Father, we pray for the sweet spirit of God to fill this place now father get glory to your glorious name use this unworthy vessel and help us lord and we'll bless you for what you do for it's in Jesus wonderful name we pray amen amen I want to address your uh, attention on verse 25 I want you to notice a couple things I want you to notice first of all the responsibility that this verse Uh, spells out now if you're a student of the Bible you know that God is speaking to Moses God has given to Moses all the instruction concerning the temple the tabernacle what will become the temple Mm, we had time we could take you over a couple chapters and show you that mm, this is what God referred to as the church in the wilderness it's the blueprint for the modern local visible New Testament Bible believe in church uh, there is a responsibility notice if you will verse 25 it says and thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment uh, God gave Moses the responsibility to go and pass on for future generations that the holy oil to be used uh, in the service of the Lord uh, was his responsibility and can I say that God don't have to meet with us, but God chooses to meet with us. Uh, but He's not just going to show up. There is a responsibility on our ha- our behalf if we're going to see God move, if we're going to see God bless, uh, if God's going to meet with us, uh, we've got to do more than just walk through those doors. Uh, we do have a responsibility. Uh, I want you to notice also, if you will, the requirements. Uh, Look again in this verse, it says, uh, in verse uh, 25, And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. Now here it is, uh, 
an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. Uh, notice that he gave them uh, some very specific requirements uh, for the holy oil to be used in service of the Lord. Uh, we go, see Miss Jackie goes on to say that the oils to never go out in the lamps uh, uh, of the house of God. Uh, and can I say there's one place uh, there ought to always be the light. Uh, it ought to be the house of God. Uh, now I'm talking about spiritual light. Uh, but he said if you're going to have this oil, uh, uh, you've got to be responsible enough to, uh, uh, to put it together. Uh, but there are certain requirements. Uh, now I know it's popular in our day that you can just come as you are. Uh, you can believe whatever you want to believe. Uh, you can do things your way and God will be pleased with it. Uh, no, no, no. Why do you think God gave us a book? Uh, uh, God gave us His statutes, uh, His precepts. Uh, God doesn't accept everything that man says He does. Uh, uh, God's looking for some specific uh, requirements to be met uh, in order for Him to show up uh, and to move in our midst. Uh, there is a responsibility. Uh, there are requirements. Uh, I promise you this. Uh, uh, if you don't ever read your Bible, uh, if you don't ever pray... Uh, if the only church you ever get or the only move of God you ever get is when you show up to sanctuary, uh, you're going to be a weak Christian. Uh, uh, you're going to be tossed and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Uh, 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 friend, uh, when you're faced with real grave things, uh, you'll fold under the pressure uh, uh, because you don't have any faith, uh, uh, because you're trusting in the faith of the preacher, the faith of the people of God. Uh, you don't get faith unless you get your face in the book. And you don't have power to overcome unless you get on your knees and spend time with God. Uh, and we see the responsibilities, we see the requirements, but I want you to notice the results. He said there, verse 25, And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. Here it is. It shall be an holy anointing oil. Now, when uh, the responsibilities and the requirements are met, the results are there will be a holy anointing oil. I don't know about you, but when I come to the house of God, I want to see the anointing of God on it. I want to see God's touch on it. I want to see God's presence uh, moving in the midst of God's people. Uh, hey, I love you, but I come looking for a greater presence than you tonight. Uh, Hey, I thank God for you, but I come looking for Him to show up uh, uh, because without Him, we're just wasting our time. Uh, but unless we accept responsibility and meet the requirements, God is not obligated to meet with us. It takes some effort. Even the most fundamental elementary uh, 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 verse concerning a church, it says where two or three are gathering to get together, in my name I'll be in the midst there's still the responsibility of two or three showing up. Right. And they still have to show up to meet the requirement. Are you listening? So I got to reading this chapter and got to thinking about some things in this chapter. And this chapter is known as far as the tabernacle is concerned, as far as the instructions that Moses is getting from God. He's up on the mountain. He's about ready to get the two tablets uh, 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 with the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God. Uh, he's about ready to get on. I mean, can you imagine he's face to face with God uh, and he's up there getting instruction for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, but this chapter, of all the instructions that he gets, this chapter uh, is known as the worship chapter. Uh, now I just want to preach on this thought for a few minutes tonight. Uh, I want to preach on let's go to worship. Huh? Let's just go to worship. Uh, hey, uh, 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 I know you faced a lot this week. Uh, I know there's been a lot of pressure. Uh, I know that uh, uh, our country's facing a lot. Uh, my heart certainly goes out to those families uh, uh, of those Marines uh, 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 that died over there in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, I know a lot of you faced hardship on your job. Uh, maybe uh, kids are back in school and you don't like your teacher. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of things going on. Uh, hey, but we're here. Uh, can we just go to worship? Uh, I mean, we've already uh, 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 faced a lot this week, uh, but we found ourselves in the house of God. Uh, uh, some of you came without eating dinner. Uh, uh, some of you are here tonight, uh, and you got so much you're facing in the days to come. Uh, but while we're here, can we just go to worship? Uh, I got to thinking about that. Uh, let me give you a few things about uh, 
I'm going to worship. First of all, uh, there's the place of worship. Everything in this chapter is dealing with the tabernacle. Can I say uh, it's popular today? Well, we can just watch it on live stream, or we can just meet down at the lake. Uh, uh, we can do whatever we want to and still worship. No, you cannot. Uh, uh, the Bible uh, makes it very clear uh, in the New Testament, 115 times you'll find the word church. Uh, 112 is dealing with the local called out assembly. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, we have been called out from the world uh, and we've been exhorted to assemble together. Uh, uh, and the Bible tells us not to forsake uh, the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, hey, uh, the church is God's government on earth uh, and God has uh, appointed a place uh, uh, where He'll worship. Uh, God didn't tell Moses, uh, uh, you bring the crowd up here on the mountain and we'll worship. Uh, no, He gives him instructions on how to erect a tabernacle, uh, how to make it portable. Uh, uh, so wherever they go in the wilderness, uh, they got a place. Uh, and He gives them requirements. Uh, and Brother Clint, uh, if they meet the requirements, uh, the Shekinah glory would fall on the place uh, and God would meet with them. Uh, God's given us a place. Uh, I don't know about anywhere else, uh, but I know on this little hill uh, off of Pleasant Valley Road, uh, there's a, many a time uh, God's walked through this place uh, and He's met with us uh, and He's changed people's lives uh, and He's given hope to the hopeless uh, and help to the helpless. Uh, God's got a place uh, and we're at His place. Uh, so why not just go to worship tonight? Uh, and there's the place of worship. But can I say there's the price to worship? Look with me in verse number 13. Verse number 13 of this chapter. Verse number 13, the Bible says, This they shall give everyone that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary, a shekel... Uh, is 20 geras <laughs> and a half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord uh, can I say there is a price to worship uh, you say preacher do you mean we got to give an offering to worship uh, no but giving an offering is a part of worship uh, but can I say uh, uh, there is a price to worship uh, the price is in that half shekel uh, now you got to understand what that represents uh, the shekel uh, was silver uh, and they had to give silver uh, if they were numbered among the people of Israel uh, to even worship uh, they each had to give half a shekel uh, I've got good news uh, silver represents redemption uh, and my dear friends there was a price paid for you and I to worship uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life on Calvary. Uh, hey, he became broken bread and poured out wine. Uh, he was beat beyond recognition uh, and shed his royal redeeming blood uh, to be the propitiation of the price uh, for our sin. Uh, and I've got good news. The price has been paid. Uh, hey, the blood has been applied. Uh, hey, everything has been taken care of uh, for you and I to worship. Uh, but if your sins have not been paid for by the blood of Christ, you have no right to worship. Uh, there's a price to worship. There's a place of worship. Can I say there's purification to worship? Look at verse 20. Look down at verse 20. And look what it says. It's speaking of Aaron and his sons, who was the chosen priesthood. But you know, you've heard me preach on it enough to know, Revelation 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse number 6, tells us that we've been made kings and priests in Christ. And we are a priest and can go to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Himself. And look what, it, what was necessary for the priest to enter the tabernacle. It says, And when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord, uh, so they shall wash their hands. Uh, can I say, in order to worship, you've got to be clean. You've got to be cleansed. Uh, can I say, it's one thing to be hey, saved and have your sins washed away. Uh, 
It's another thing to come to the house of God clean. Uh, 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 are you clean? Uh, have you done business with God? Uh, is your mind clean? Uh, is your body clean? Uh, is your spirit clean? Uh, are you able to worship? Uh, a lot of folks come to the house of God. Uh, they're dressed right, uh, but they're not clean inside. Uh, they've not done business with God. Uh, I'm thankful for 1 John 1, 9. If we'll confess our sins, uh, he's faithful and just to cleanse us from our sins. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, but friend, if you're not clean, when you come in the house of God, you can't worship. Uh, you wonder why some people never have a testimony? You wonder why some people never do business in the, in the service? You never see them on the altar? You never see a, a tear shed? You never see a smile? You never see a hand raised? You never see anything out of them? Because they're not clean. Okay, I will tell it. Instead of spending the two hours before church on their phone checking out Facebook, if they spent two hours in the Word of God, they'd be clean when they got here. The two people, amen to me, are the only ones besides me that don't have Facebook. I see it. I see people sitting in the pews for church. You think God's honored with that? Sitting in His house? And you're bringing things of the world in here? You think God's going to meet with you? You're fortunate God don't strike you dead. Because it said if they didn't wash, they'd die. And you do die a little bit more spiritually. A little bit more spiritually. You get a little bit more hard-hearted towards the things of God. And every time I preach on Facebook, it bounces off you like a rubber ball and a brick wall because you don't care. Because I'm on your little idol. Hmm? You're going to stand for God, not me. Not on that issue. Uh, I wonder what else goes through people's minds. I wonder how much gossip is done in the parking lot before they come into the house of God. And they wonder why they can't worship. I wonder what worldly stuff he's listening to on the radio before they come in the house of God. And they can't worship. I mean, we're only coming to, to the house of God. He said you had to be cleansed. You had to wash. Some of you ought to check yourself at the door like Folks check their coats at a fancy restaurant. You ought to check yourself at the door. See if you're clean enough to come into the house of God. Hmm? Where's all that shouting on, let's go to worship? That's why some of you can't worship. You're not clean. You're not purified. You say, preacher, you're saying I'm not saved? Didn't say that at all. You're saying you're not clean. Listen, how many of you eat at a restaurant when the waitress, just before she brings your food, she goes, <sniffs> or drops your food on the floor and bends down, picks up, throws it back on your plate and sets it for you? That's disgusting, is it not? That's what we are before God if we're not clean when we walk in them doors. Hmm. See, we don't think of things in reality. We have the mindset that God's here for us. You do understand worship is us being here for Him. Oh, you didn't know that. That's your problem. God's not here for your beckoning and call. We're here to glorify God. In order to worship, there has to be purification. There has to be a price. There has to be a place. <clears throat> but notice the prevalence for worship. Some of you are hoping I'd go back on the road. I can see it in your face. There's the prevalence for worship. I'm going to spend a little time here. I didn't read all these verses because I knew I'd read them now. Look at verse 22. 
Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee the principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of the oil, olive, and hen, and thou shalt make it. Here's where our text verse come into place. And that's all the ingredients. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle, the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all the vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, uh, and the art of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the laver and his foot, uh, thou shalt, uh, and thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy, uh, and thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Uh, and thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generation. Now notice the prevalence for worship. All of these things picture something. The tabernacle itself, everything within it pictured what Jesus Christ would do for you and I on the cross of Calvary and as our heavenly high priest. The only thing in the tabernacle that doesn't represent uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is the oil. And that represents the Holy Spirit. But we find everything represents Him. And so we see the prevalence for worship. First of all, for you and I to worship, we must be spiritual. You can't be carnal in worship. You've got to be spiritual. Now, in these verses, we find the recipe for spirituality. There are the spices. And by the way, it said the, the chief spices the principal spices, the most important spices. And can I say, God always puts the best first. Hmm? God's not interested in leftovers. He's interested in the principal things. And if I had time, I'd break all these down, but I, I won't be able to finish the message. But let me just say this about these spices. Each and every one of them come from a plant where they have to be stripped away from the plant. And then most of them have to be broken up with a mallet or a hammer. And the smaller they get, the more aroma they put off. And can I say, if we're going to be spiritual, we've got to be stripped away from the world. Again, I already alluded to you, little thing you carry in your purse or your pocket book or your pocket uh, 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 that little walking computer you got uh, I've already referred to music and referred to a lot of things see uh, uh, the reason you just can't give it up because it's a part of you and if you're going to be spiritual you've got to be stripped of those things and the only one who can do that's the Lord he does it through preaching and through conviction and through you surrendering and when you are willing to give him you, he'll take the desire of those things away. But as long as your desires are those things, God will say, go have at it. But the next time that your baby's in the hospital, don't come call him my way. The next time you've got a need and you need a job or you need this, or anything, don't, don't depend on me. And I'm not here to just take care of you. When you put me first, you'll find that everything in your life will work out to the glory of God. But when you put you first, don't waste God's time. So you've got to be stripped, and then we've got to be broken. The reason some people can't worship, they're not spiritual because they're not broken. They're not humble. It doesn't matter. We could have had a quartet up here. It had big fancy equipment, and they all sang in harmony. It was all dressed alike. Everything was uh, uh, perfect in its presentation, but I'd rather heard that fellow right there get up and sing that song with a broken spirit because there was something to it. Mm -mm. And you cannot be spiritual without being broken. Mm. Matter of fact, 
God will not use you greatly until He's wounded you deeply. So there's prevalence for worship. One must be spiritual. The recipe for spirituality we find in the spices. We also find that it must be sanctified. Look in verse 29. Look what it says. And thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. He's talking about all the, the, the furniture and all the instruments for worship. They had to be sanctified. And if you and I are going to be vessels in the midst of worship, we must be sanctified. That means set apart. That means that you have come apart from the world and set yourself in array towards the Lord Jesus Christ and surrendered to His will. You just let Him have control of your life. As long as you sit on the, on the throne of your life and you call the shots, you'll never worship. But when you get to the point you can't get over Jesus, you'll do some worshiping. Uh, but it takes spices. You need to be stripped and broken. It takes being sanctified, and you must be a servant. Look at verse number 30. Thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. They were servants. And until you're willing to be a servant and let Jesus be the master, you'll never worship. Just make me a servant in the house of God. There's nothing greater. Nothing greater than being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. The prevalence of our worship, you must be spiritual. Not only that, you must be sensitive you must be in tune. You see, the things of God are spiritually discerned. If you're not spiritual, you will not be able to discern them. That's why we can have a testimony service and God be blessing it and folks standing up with a broken heart and testifying and then somebody else stand up and ask the congregation to pray for their dog. Nothing spiritual in it. Why? They're not sensitive. They just want to hear themselves speak. When you're sensitive, you know if it's God's will for you to speak or not. And I say it's not God's will for every time we come together, for every preacher in here to preach, every singer in here to sing, every saint of God in here to testify. If that's the case, we never leave church. We have to be sensitive. Is it God's will for me to stand up and testify? And if you're asking the church to pray for your dog, it's not God's will. Hmm. Well, they're part of the family. I, I know I got one too. Well, let me help you something with a little fi Fido, a little Fifi. They don't have a soul. I know they got a personality, and I know you think they got a soul. They don't have a soul. Mm -hmm. You do. Your dog doesn't. There are not going to be any doggies in heaven. Okay? There'll be horses, because we're riding back on one. Speaking of which, Brother Rocky's got a couple horses. That's the funniest thing. We went and saw their new house again. He, every time I'm down there, he said, I'm going to be in it in a month. Well, that's been about a year now. But they're getting close, and it's looking so good, and we're so happy for him and Miss Deborah. Well, he got him a couple of horses. One of the granddaughters wanted a horse. So he got a horse. You should have seen him horse. He went back, and he let one out of the pasture, and that the horse just followed him right on his shoulder. Just Everywhere he went, there was that horse. He just loved Rocky. uh and then the other one got jealous, so he let that one out. And his, he just lets them roam free when he's out there working on the house. They won't, they won't stray anywhere from him. It was just something. Seeing a 900-pound animal following Brother Rocky around. It was something. Uh, listen, you've got to learn to be sensitive. Not scared. Some of you are scared to death to say something because I've told you, if you're saying something out of the will of God, I'll sit you down. So you're scared to death to say something. Well, can I say? Mm, there is no spirit of fear amongst the saints of God. But you've got to be sensitive. You've got to know if it's God speaking and wanting you to say something or if it's your desire. Say, how do I know if there's doubt you don't speak? God always makes His way clear. Talking about the prevalence to worship. You've got to be spiritual. You've got to be sensitive. But you also got to be sanctioned by His touch. If you don't know when God's touch is on you and when it's not, you're not spiritual. Just that simple. 
There's nothing like knowing the touch of God. And there's some that don't have a clue. It's because you don't know how to worship. Let's go to worship. You're in the right place. The price has been paid. If you're saved, once you get cleansed and once you get in the book and get on your face and become spiritual and you'll have his touch. Hmm? Now I want to bring something out because I'm almost done. Notice what happens when the flesh gets involved. Everything becomes defiled by the flesh. Look at verse 32. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall you make any other like it. After the composition of it, it is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. God does not ever let flesh be glorified in His presence. And so if it's all about somebody, and here's a good way to tell if it's all about somebody. First of all, if you're spiritual, you know when it's all about somebody. But if all their testimony is I, 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 me, 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 I, I, me, 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 I, I, me, 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 and it's not about the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, God's not within a million miles of it. Huh? And listen, if God never does anything for you, that gets you to want to glorify Him unless He meets something financially for you, I do some checking up. Some people, they only testify when God meets their bills. Well, i got good news for you. He's promised to do that. But some people, that's the only time you hear something out of them is if they get a check in the mail. Well, i got news for you. He's a much bigger and much greater God than that. Well, let's get to the praise in worship. Look at verse 34. I'm almost done, but I'm having a good time. Leave me alone. Verse 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, stack tea, an anyacha, or however you say that, galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each who shall there be like weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy, and thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put, it, uh, put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee, it shall be unto you most holy. The perfume was always a picture of praise. And friends, you cannot worship without praise. And can I say... The praise should always be directed about the Lord and to the Lord. He inhabits the praise of, of Israel, the Bible says. But can I say the praise for the Lord should deal with His sweetness. That's what all those spices are dealing with. The perfumes, the sweetness. If you can't talk about how sweet God is and how wonderful He is and how beautiful He is and how lovely He is and how gracious He is and how long-suffering He is and how holy He is, friend, you don't know Him. Hmm. Hey, even the, the psalmist said, Taste and see that the Lord is good. He goes on to say, He's sweeter than the honeycomb. Uh, you find the sweetness of God, that God just meets with you in the midst of your day and lifts your spirit. I mean, there's so much that we could say there. Uh, praise for the Lord over His sweetness. We should praise Him for supplying our needs. It's okay to say, I want to thank the Lord for taking care of me and meet my needs but it's usually better after you've talked about how sweet he is and we should praise the Lord for our successes our victories those things he's helped us overcome there should be praise and worship but then let me say this lastly there has to be participation in worship just showing up to church and I'm glad you're here but that's not enough you need to participate worship is a verb Verb is an action word. It means you must do something. Mm -hmm. How do we participate in worship? First of all, you participate by giving. Giving an offering. Giving your testimony. Giving the right hand of fellowship to a brother. Giving someone a kind word fitly spoken. There's a lot of ways you can give. Give of your time. Give of your talent. There's a lot of things you can give. But you give. The Bible, I've said this many a times, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
when you get born again, you take on the nature of God. And one of the natures of God, he's a giving God. You show me somebody that's a stingy Christian, I'll show you somebody that's not right with God. Mm, there are people that are giving. They've learned the secret of giving. You give unto the Lord. You can't outgive him. He gives it back, pressed down, shaking, and bubbling over. Uh, you participate by giving. You participate by granting. What do I grant? You grant the Holy Spirit control of your life. You grant the Holy Spirit access to your heart to speak unto you and to convict you and to transform you and to help you. I think of that song Brother Clint sings every now and then about that secret place in our heart. If you don't grant the Holy Spirit access, you're not going to become what the Holy Spirit wants you to become. But then you also say this, lastly, you participate in worship by getting. What do I get? Well, here's where it gets real tricky. There are some people who give to get, and they don't get. There are some people, they come to get something from God, they don't get. We don't come to get in that sense. Well, what are we getting? We come to get what we need to be effective for Him. We don't come to get what we want to be at ease in our life. So many people, they want God in their life so they have no problems. Well, I, I, got some, I got some bad news for you. Job said, man's days are few and full of trouble. You're going to have problems. Yep. Miss Nett and I, the other night, we were clicking channels and we watched Joel for a minute. <laughs> or as Brother Bobby calls him, Jolly Olstein. And, and I'm watching him give people false hope. And I'm looking at people when they fan the congregation, and I'm looking at folks that had no hope. And then, just to make it interesting, I clicked one more channel, and I got to see Joyce. I hadn't seen Joyce in a while. Joyce had uh, cosmetic surgery. She needs a refund. Her face now, she has the same expression and smile as Jack Nicholson did as the Joker in Batman. I mean, it was, it was scary, man. I had to turn the channel. I mean, it was scary. Uh, go look at Joyce and tell me if she don't look like the Joker. I'm telling you. Scary. You see, people have bought into this ideology that's been pumped through by these people and, and others out there that you come and God's going to take care of you. If you... If you sow a seed of faith, God's going to bless it abundantly. Man's days are few and full of trouble. And if all you're coming is get something to help you over your troubles, you're going you're to find out there's, there, you're going to live a very shallow Christian life. You ought to come to get Him. Because as long as I've got Him, I really have no troubles. I really have no problems because I've given them to Him. And I can just enjoy Him. You say, preacher, you, you, you never face anything. I face something every day. But the key is, is I don't face it alone. It doesn't control me. I've been amazed at how little it takes to knock people off of spiritual things. All it took was the pen of a governor saying that churches are non-essential and there are some churches that still haven't opened. That does not sound like the same crowd in Hebrew chapter 11 where they were sown asunder and where they were stoned and where they were put to death for their faith. No, they just went and hid. Well, I might get sick. I got news for you. There's always something going around. I've told you before, the reason it's COVID-19, there's been 18 others. They've just been called some other variant of flu. Why do you think there's been zero flu cases in this area in the last 18 months? Because it's now called COVID. Is it a virus? Yes. Let me help you with something. Get all the shots you want. There's no cure for a virus. Viruses have to run their courses. Mm -hmm. Say, well, it'll, it'll make the, the effects of it not as strong. That may be. But it may kill you too. 
I heard Brother Jerry's Sunday school teacher say this Sunday. I thought it was so profound. And come from Brother Johnny, it's something because he's a, he's a country boy. He said this. He said, I'd rather have faith and get COVID and die and meet the Lord with faith than have fear and get COVID and die and meet the Lord with fear. I've got news for you. Unless the Lord Jesus raptures his church out of here, we're all going to die. It's, it's going to be COVID, cancer, heart attack, stroke. You're going to get hit by a bus. A satellite's going to fall out of the air and hit you. I don't know. You're going to die of something. But one thing's for sure, if you're right with God, the sting of death has already been removed. And regardless, He's promised to never leave you nor forsake you. So why am I going to get so worried about anything? I'll just trust Jesus. If I can trust Him with my soul, I certainly can trust Him with my life. And so many people, you come to get something you've already been promised. So why don't you come to get Him? Get what you need to be effective in this world to point others to Jesus. Don't come to get something that makes your life easier. The Bible says in Amos 6.12, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. There's nothing good comes from easiness. An idle mind's the devil's workshop. The best you'll ever be is when you're busiest for the Lord. So why don't you become effective? How effective are you in your testimony for Christ? What impact are you making? Because that's all that really matters. Now I want you to do this right now. I want you to think about your little life right now. Everything that's encompassed in your life. Everything you're facing. A hundred years from now, will it matter? Because the only thing that's really going to matter is what we do for Jesus. So when we're here, shouldn't we worship? Because I promise you, when you get to heaven, he's not going to be concerned about what seats you sat in at the opera or what, where you ate the restaurant or what you did here, what you did. You know what he's going to be interested in? How much you worshiped him and how effective your life was for him outside these doors. Because that's all that really matters. Let's go to worship. Worship is always about Him and doing it His way. And when we do that, He lifts your spirits. When you leave the house of God, you leave different than when you came in. You leave with the same problems, but the problems no longer control you. You leave with Him, and nothing else really matters. And isn't that the release we need when we come to church to get rid of all the junk and leave better than when we came. It happens when we worship. But when you come and you don't worship, you just leave and you leave with the mindset that was an hour and a half of my life I'll never get back. I want my life to count for Christ. And I want my worship to glorify Christ. So I wonder, did you come to worship tonight? And will you come to worship on Sunday? Remember the very first point of the introduction, thou? The responsibility lies on you, it lies on me. What will we do? with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Maybe you want to come and thank Him. But you've got a place where you can worship Him. Maybe you want to come and apologize to Him. Maybe He spoke to you about something else. Maybe you've been here and the Lord's been dealing with your heart about getting saved. Maybe tonight be a good night to you do that. Maybe tonight you just want to come and tell him how sweet he's been to you.
folks are filling up this altar, but there's room for you. They're picking a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. You are certainly worthy of our worship, our praise, our allegiance, our loyalty. You're worthy of our life because you gave your life for us. So, Lord, help us. Lord, do not take for granted nor take lightly the privilege set before us to be able to worship. Help us to pay the price and meet the requirements that, God, we truly can worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to always leave different than we come in. Now, God, bless in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Lord, I pray for conviction. I pray for confirmation. Pray for comfort. Lord, whatever is needed, administer it now, and we'll thank you for it. Bless now. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we ask these things. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.